What's going on everyone? My name is Alpha Red Dragon, and today we're going to have a tutorial. I'm back in the uh, top-down shooter project file, and um, as you guys remember, last time we did this, the um, the AI for the enemy, right? It didn't care about the blocks, didn't care about anything, it just kind of ran straight for the player. So in this video, I wanted to show you guys how to actually set up a little grid that the, um, that the enemy will follow to make sure it doesn't collide with anything and move towards you at, I guess, the optimal way you could find. So once this loads, there we go. As you guys can see, we have this basic top-down shooter file where you can collide with the walls, but the enemy doesn't really care for the walls. So you guys can see it'll just kind of... It doesn't really care for me existing either because it didn't bother putting that in, but it'll just move straight through the walls. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go into the enemy and actually have my... Um, thing pulled up here just as a reference so in the creative let's go ahead and make a creative app for it then we're gonna add the function mp underscore grid underscore create and this just basically stands for motion planning grid create left okay let me just go ahead and open this just to make sure I don't give you guys any wrong information so the X start position, the Y start position, so we're gonna set that to 0, 0, so 0, 0, so it's in the top left corner of the room, then H cells and V cells. The way we're gonna want to do this is, it depends on the size of your object, but the way I've grown used to using it is H cells should be room underscore width, so basically captures the width of the room and divided by the size of your cell. So in this case, I'm not going to make it too precise, so I'm going to go for 64 pixel cells. Then, And then the next one is vertical cells. So it's literally going to be the same thing as in room underscore height. H-E-I-G-H-T. Why can I not spell? H-E-I-G-H-T. I, I apologize. H-E-I-G-H-T. There we go. Divided by 64. The next argument is cell width and cell length. This is just how wide and how long you want the cells to be, and in this case, since I set set the room, the amount of cells in the room to be divided by 64, I'm just going to make all my cells 64 pixels. And there we go. We have a basic grid created. Then, what we're going to do is, um, path. Let me go ahead and look up path here really quickly. So the one you're going to need is path add right here. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to create a, let's just say this is um, follow path equals, and then you're going to do path add. There we go. This just create, this just assigns this path to follow path. Then we can do MP underscore grid underscore path. Then MP underscore good underscore path. Let's go ahead and open that in the manual. No, stop adding letters. I have a couple buttons bound to some letters, so it just keeps adding them in. I would appreciate it if you didn't do that. There we go. Alright. So we have the ID, which is the grid that we want to use. Oh, and I also forgot to add, let's just say this is um grid underscore follow. And set that to be equal to this grid. So here we're going to do grid underscore follow, there we go, then the path ID, which is the index of the path which we created right here, so just go ahead and copy that, paste that in, boom. Then the next thing is the X start and X and Y start, which is the starting and finishing points of this, of this path. So we're just going to use the um, X and Y coordinates of the enemy to do that. Then the X and Y end positions, which we're going to make the um, obj underscore player dot X and obj underscore player dot Y. Go ahead and close that off. And did I mess up somewhere? What is it? What is it not like? Oh, okay. And I forgot one step. Allow diagonal, which means if Basically, you just want to set this to either true or false, so it knows whether it can move in diagonal lines or only straight lines. In this case, we're just going to set that to true. There we go. 
And what this is going to do is just going to basically make it move towards the X and Y coordinate of the player. There we go. Now, I believe in... Actually, we're going to go ahead and copy this so it updates every step. There we go. Set that there. And then... Then if we do path underscore start path which is follow follow underscore path there we go and follow underscore path speed let's go ahead and just set that to what was it here five so let's go ahead and set that to the same thing and action all the end action is is um we just go back to here. The end action is what the um, it's what the object is gonna do here. So what we're gonna do is continue from the path from the start, jump into the start position again. But what we're gonna do is um, path action stops. So it just kind of stops. Path underscore action stop. Absolute path is um, as you can see here. Absolute is whether it should follow the absolute path, which is kind of somewhat near what the path is. I tend to just do false because it gives it less of a, I guess you could say, like computer feel. It makes it feel a lot smoother rather than following the exact point of the path. Alright, and that should be good. Let's go ahead and run, actually, just to make sure, we're going to go back into here and comment out the move towards point function. So the only thing that should be moving it is the path. There we go. Now all this, there we go. So as you guys can see, now it follows me along, follows me along the quickest path that it could find. And as you guys can see, it turns very quickly just to make sure that it can follow me. But as you can see, it still ignores the walls because we hadn't added anything in that makes it recognize the walls as a bad object. So if we go back into the enemy, I believe the function was, if I can remember the syntax off the top of my head, it's mp underscore grid underscore instance add, what was it, add instance? Instances, there we go. id, which is the id of the grid, so it's grid underscore follow, there we go, object obj underscore wall, and pre... I can't exactly remember what that stands for. Let's go ahead and check whether it checks based on so true or fast. And the true or fast things, what it does is the true one, it'll check for pixel perfect collision, which means that if like it'll check inside the box to make sure it can it barely collides with it. But the false one, as you guys can see, the um, cell size for a grid is 64 by 64 pixels. It'll, if there's even a pixel of the wall in that 64 by 64 piece, it'll set the entire box to basically not be collided with. So in this case, since we're not doing too much, I'm going to set it to true. There we go. So it true tends to be a little more intensive on the computer because it has to do pixel perfect like measurements. And false is just, it's basically if you're using 64 by 64 blocks everywhere. And they're aligned with your grid, which I think these blocks won't be because it's starting from 0, 0, but back in this thing that's now loaded, as you guys can see, the enemy is stuck in this corner right here. But if I... please... okay, no, the enemy is actually just non-existent. Where'd it go? Let me reload this. Okay, so now that we're reloading this, because the enemy apparently decided it wanted to just disappear, don't exactly know where it went or why it happened, but who knows. So while this is loading, all we did was basically add the, um, the wall instance as a collidable object into the grid, and the grid tends to work nicely when you're working on like top-down things, like a maze or something, but it doesn't work the best when um, you're working with like platformers or stuff. So as you can see now, it's doing all, it, all that it can to avoid the wall object, but still get to us as fast as possible. This is a nice, just very simple AI to have in your game. It takes like only like 5-10 minutes to set up. And if we can actually go ahead and... Uh... Now... 
Now you guys can have a basic AI that follows you around. Just make sure that your level fits in and that the size of the cells matches what you're working with. And if you guys have any other requests for tutorials, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. I'll read all of them and do whichever ones I can get around to and whichever ones I can help out with. So yeah, I'll see you all in the next video.